when you pitch your yeast, it's got a little lag stage where it's going, hmm, what am I doing in here? That's right, I've got to start fermenting. Cheers! Happy Own Brew Wednesday! This is just a pale ale, pretty much. Nothing special, nothing finished, it's still got a bit of crashing and clearing up to do, it's still got some carbonation to do as well. But it's sitting in the keg, it's drinkable, so I'll drink it. That's right, quite piney, spicy-ish. Cascaded in there or something, I don't know. Can't remember what it was dry hopped with. God, brewing's a blur. But yeah, it was just a table beer just to drink. The Parallel Counterflow Chiller Trilogy is up. You don't have to wait for Christmas for the last part. It's all up, it's all finished. Go and check it out, it's on YouTube. There will be a link right at the end of this video that you can click on and go directly to part one. Find out what happens. So since my last Homebrew Wednesday, there's been some discussions about um, acetaldehyde and diacetyl and TMS and stuff like this. Which is cool, you know, there's been some discussions on the video, some comments on the video, um, and some comments um, on Facebook through the Hut Brewer page. Um, and it's cool, it's really cool that people are starting to talk about these off flavours, you know, that they're not taboo. Um, and one thing that popped up that was quite interesting was um, two people, Richard Devil actually mentioned it um, on Facebook. Now Richard Devil won um, the Brewers Award, Brewers Award? I think it was the Brewers Award. Um, at the Sober National Homebrew Championships here in New Zealand in 2012. So he brews some good beer. Um, and also Dan ABA uh, mentioned it um, on my last Homebrew Wednesday video in one of the comics. Um, what they mentioned was forced diacetyl tests. Um, this is a little test that you can do at home in the safety of your own brewery to work out whether your fermentation has got rid of diacetyl. Before I talk about the forced diacetyl test, we need to know what diacetyl is and where it comes from. Um, now diacetyl is a compound that is created with a precursor called alpha acetylactate. Now acetylactate leaches out of yeast. It, it comes through the cell membrane of yeast when it's um, fermenting. So when you pitch your yeast there's that little lag period that's sitting there going, yep, what should I do? Oh, sugars I can eat. Oh, let's start eating them. Once it starts getting vigorous it starts to produce acetylactate, um, which is fine because acetylactate by itself doesn't have any off flavours. It doesn't impart a flavour onto your beer. Now as the yeast goes along and it keeps on eating, um, it needs nutrient to keep on eating. Now if it runs out of nutrient, it produces more of its own nutrient, um, but along with that extra nutrient that it produces, it produces more acetylactate as well. Um, so it, me it needs amino acids, uh, viatin or something like that, um, to keep healthy and to keep on going. So if it doesn't have it, it produces it and it makes more acetylactate as a byproduct of doing that. Which is fine. When the yeast starts to slow down, its maturation um, period, um, it goes through and it cleans up that acetylactate. Um, goes through and reabsorbs it back in and nobody's the wiser, you know, it's like it never existed. Except if there's too much. If there's too much or the yeast gets tired, that acetylactate stays there. You open up your fermenter and you have a sniff. Oh yeah, that smells pretty good to me. And you rack it off and you put it into a keg or you put it into secondary or you do something, you rack it off that yeast bed. So technically you're taking all the yeast away from the beer and you're starting to clear it up. But it might still have lots of lots of acetylactate in it. Now, acetylactate once it's out of your fermenter, actually while it's in your fermenter as well, as a reaction with oxidization, it forms diacetyl. So you don't taste diacetyl in your fermenter really, unless you've got a really big, really bad, bad bug, um, which can also form diacetyl as well. Um, but anyway, the force diacetyl test will show you whether you've got that. But most of the diacetyl that you get in a beer is a product of oxidization of acetylactate after you finish fermenting. So, the forced diacetyl test is a test to see 
how much acetolactate you still have in your beer before you take it off the yeast bed. Now remember the yeast will eat this acetolactate, how many times have I said acetolactate? Someone keep counting, tell me in the comments. Um, and get rid of it so it doesn't form diesel. But if you can't taste it in your beer in the fermenter, it's hard to detect whether it's there. So the forced diacetyl test is you take two um, samples from your fermenter. Obviously follow, following, following <clears throat> um, sanitary procedures, um, get two containers. You know, maybe a container like this. Oh look, it's got a urine sample. Oh, SJ knows what this is. Um, these take about 45 50 mil. Oh, good stuff. Just little yeast vials, or in this case, it was a urine sample. No, it wasn't urine, it was bourbon, my bourbon. Pretty good. Um, if you haven't got these, a little glass jar or something like that, just anything that you can take a sample from that won't get contaminated. These are sterile um, when I get them from the homebrew store um, and therefore putting yeast in them. So, what you want to do is you want to take one sample, put it aside. Um, at room temperature. The other sample you want to put in a hot water bath and you want to heat it up to around about 60 to 70 degrees over the span of about 10 to 20 minutes. Okay, um, With the cap on or the tin foil over the glass if you've got a glass or a little glass jar. Um, what you're doing is you're forcing um, the oxidization reaction with the acetolactate to form diacetyl. Whip it out and then put it in a cold water bath and bring it back to room temperature again. Then you get your two samples, if I had two test tubes it would be a lot easier to do a demonstration, um, and smell one and smell the other. Okay. And what you're looking for is you're looking for a difference in that smell and you want to see if you can detect diacetyl. In your um, sample that you took from the fermenter without heating it up, if you don't, doubt, if you don't smell diacetyl in that, that's cool, you smell the next one. If you can smell diacetyl you know that there's more acetolactate um, in your fermenter that hasn't been eaten up by the yeast yet, in which case you need to increase your diacetyl rest. Now by diacetyl rest we mean telling the yeast to hurry up and stop being fucking lazy and get up there and finish off all the rest of um, the acetyl lactate that's floating around. And you do that just by upping the temperature a couple of degrees from, from what your fermenting temperature was for you know, about two days. And that sort of makes the yeast go, ooh, yeah, I'll finish off, do what I was doing. Um, and then test it again. Now, if you smell diacetyl in the first sample that you took that was at room temperature, then you've got a different problem. And that problem is a contamination that is forming um, diacetyl. So, whole different kettle of fish. Check your sanitation rates. But the forced diacetyl test will detect that. So then you'll be able to know whether you're getting diacetyl from contamination or getting di diacetyl from not having a sufficient diacetyl rest in your fermentation. Not enough yeast to finish it off and stuff like that. So hopefully that little bit of information helped you out to try and work out how to get rid of diacetyl. Um, one thing that might spring to mind is if you used to do um, bottle conditioning um, you may have found that you didn't have as much diacetyl as what you have now when you are doing kegging. That's because when you do bottle conditioning, you're bottling from the fermenter and you're taking a little bit of the suspended yeast and it goes into the bottle, you know, the, the gunk at the bottle. Well, that little bit of suspended yeast that's in that bottle is still working away as long as you don't chill it down. So it's still eating away at the, at the um, acetolactate. When you keg, generally we're in a hurry and we go, ooh, I want to drink this. You rack it off straight to a keg, you crash it, any of the yeast that was left there suspended drops to the bottom and then you start drinking it. And you go, oh, this tastes great. It's cold and everything like that. And then you go, oh, I want to share these bottles around. So you get your bottle gun out and start filling up some bottles. Put them aside. At that stage, you start to get diacetyl again. Because if you had acetolactate in your keg, it was suspended, it's now in the bottle. There's a chance of contamination from the bottle as well. You've got some oxidization because you're moving stuff around in the air. It's going to start forming diacetyl. So two months down the track, the beer that you're tasting straight out of the keg fresh, that was wonderful, now has diacetyl. Bye, right. I'll put the, the steps um, that I copied from 
um, a website somewhere. I'll put a link to the website as well um, in my description below uh, so that you can follow the steps for doing a, a forced diacetyl test. So anyway, that's diacetyl. All about it. How to get rid of it. Well, not all about it. I didn't cover the contamination stuff. Phew. Look at that stuff. Whew, sanitize well. That's all I can say. Sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Sanitize well. Alright, SJ4 update. August. It is August. Wow. We have the EU, we have Australia currently doing their beers at the moment. Um, Canada is coming online very, very soon. Um, the US finals um, are starting today, yesterday, tomorrow, someday, depends on what time you watch this video. Um, and New Zealand is going to be doing their reviewing, our reviewing, um, at the end of August, starting 31st. I think. So August is the month. You'll see the little blue lines, the little grey lines start to get bluer on the SJ Poor website. Um, it's going to be exciting. Who is going to be the first person that becomes one of the worldwide final brewers? Now, is it going to be Australia that finishes first or is it going to be the EU? Or is the US finals just going to rock it away and drink all their beers as fast as they possibly can to try and work out who's going to be their top three? Fun stuff. It's going to be interesting to see who's in the top three going forward worldwide for each of these countries. Now, as I said, for New Zealand, we are doing our swap during Beavana weekend. Not at Beavana. Um, I've managed to get in contact with most of you. There's still about five people that I haven't heard from or that I don't know what you're doing. Um, so if you're not in Wellington and you didn't get my email, check your spam folder. Um, as we come closer to the deadline, if you don't get your beers to me, boom, you're going to have to forfeit or drop out of the challenge because we can't hold up the tasting of these beers um, because we've got people coming into Wellington and leaving Wellington during one weekend and they need to be able to take those beers away. Anyway, that's enough from me. Cheers. Have yourself an hour.